My name is Tara Veladro Toye, and I'm the founder of House of Tara. House of Tara is a pioneer in indigenous makeup business in Nigeria. It was founded about 23 years ago. Uh, we have three business units. Um, we have a retail chain of stores across the country where we, we retail uh, our product line and many other brands. Uh, we also have training centers, 19 of them across the country, where we train uh, people who want to become makeup artists who are interested in starting a business. Then we also have a distribution business, and a distribution business to distribute brands, our brand and other brands, in many of the otherwise unsophisticated platforms. But we also have, I think this is the most important part of our business, is our impact business. It's part of our distribution channel, but it's the work that we do with young women who want to start micro businesses using the Tara product line as the product to help them become financially independent. We spend a lot of time investing in training and developing them, but also giving them something that can help them in becoming financially independent. Uh, when I started as a bridal makeup artist, actually the first bridal makeup artist in Nigeria 23 years ago, the industry didn't exist. It's amazing to see the growth that has happened. Um, at that time, brides did their makeup themselves or one auntie just helped to put one red lipstick on their lips for them. But what I did was to actually create an experience of letting brides know that you could look amazing and, and you could use the power of makeup for that. Um, and then as, as I started to grow my business, um, I went into training people and so as I train people we now started to have an influx of makeup artists into the industry uh, but also as I was training my, my students who now became makeup artists we also created our own, our own line of makeup which was also the first indigenous makeup product in Nigeria. At that time it was called Uriki Lewa. Uh, we've evolved now and gone to the name Tara but we still have ensured that all the names that describe our products enforce and uh, showcase our culture, our language and our heritage. So it's also a way of sharing a part of our history to the world. It's great to see how makeup artists have now. We have freelance makeup artists who've left university, um, come to graduated and their first job is not to go and get a job in a bank, but to actually develop their skill as makeup artists. I think that's absolutely amazing as freelance makeup artists. Many of them are also working at television stations, working on it for editorials for many magazines. Some of them are working in the film industry using special effects. Um, so that's great. But also there's also the evolution around some of them who have now not just become no longer just freelance makeup artists, but have also evolved into owning their own studios where um, they service their customers and they're also able to train people because they have facilities to be able to do so. Um, it's in the sense of fulfillment that young people who love beauty, love fashion, you know, and love everything that has to do with with this, do not need to settle. No matter what you studied, I studied law. No, if you study medicine, you could study chemical engineering, but you love the arts, and then you can come and express yourself through this, and then also make money from doing so. I think that has been totally, totally amazing to see. Some of the challenges have included, first of all, not being able to find products that were fit for purpose for the Nigerian woman. We were flooded with international brands and many of those brands didn't have us in mind when they were created. So many makeup artists had to mix and match. But it's great to see how the evolution has taken place in the industry. Now there are more and more options of products to use. That's one of the things. The second thing also is that, you know, people talk about being the market being saturated, but Nigeria is a big country. In a few years ago, when we we're talking about the growth of the middle class, that also gave the opportunity for more makeup artists to have jobs because people got more economically free they also started to engage in what they call some of the things that are luxurious. Luxury would be include having a makeup artist do your makeup for you when you're going for a party. But with the economic recession that we've had multiple times in the, on the, in the last few years has reduced the number of what you call the middle class in Nigeria. And then of course that also impacts them as a whole. Of course we always talk about counterfeited products so now we have products that are great for us that have been thought about brands that are creating great products unfortunately we as a business have suffered for example from counterfeiters and so counterfeiters what they do is you know expose makeup artists to buying products that are not of great quality simply because they're able to flood the distribution channel using counterfeit products and so that's, these are some of the challenges of course with the lockdown and the pandemic that has happened more recently we've suffered a lot of lo loss of resources because 
in the last uh, two months, we haven't been able to work and some of, the, some of us are already affected in March because there was already the spread and the conversations around COVID and therefore that also impacted how customers and clients were responsive um, to wanting to engage someone at that personal level. So this has become a massive shift for us in how do we find a way to reorganize for the new normal. The pandemic uh, itself has economic impact, but it's also had psychological impact. Um, psychological impact because we're talking about a lot of young people who had aspirations of building their businesses, aspirations of becoming the next big makeup artist and had dreams. And unfortunately, with the closure of many of the event centers and you know the suspension of, of big events, this is no longer giving us the opportunity. Plus, we're such a high-touch business and or we interact with our clients very closely. Unfortunately, with social distancing, that has now become puts uh, pressure on many of our makeup artists not to be able to, to work and serve. So that's affecting them psychologically because now they're forced to be at home. There are no red carpet events for them to do makeup for. Difficult to even create content for social media because also with social distancing, then you don't have models that you can use and what have you. So that's become a big issue. But of course, there's the economical side to it, which is uh, loss of resources, loss of funds, loss of revenue. Um, and the revenue, we're talking about two months, three months of not being able to serve your clients and not be able to get paid uh, and there are many, many makeup artists who, uh, because of the kind of work we do, you know, basically are daily wage earners. Um, and what, when government was trying to talk about palliatives, there was a lot of focus on the vulnerable in the society. But I, I, I dare say that many of these makeup artists can easily overnight become part of the vulnerable in the society simply because these are people who work based on appointments. And the appointments come daily, weekly, they get paid. And it's in trickles, right? Unfortunately, when that doesn't happen, then we're talking about a loss in revenue. So for those who have been greatly affected by the impact of the lockdown and suspension of events, we have to rethink what our new normal is in terms of new opportunities. And to think, think new opportunities, we have to think virtual, we have to think digital, right? Ask yourself, what is it that I can do with the skills I currently have for using the digital platforms that I have, currently have to leverage and to express my gifts. This is going to be the new way of thinking. And from that thinking, ideas will come. The more you spend time thinking about virtual, digital, virtual, digital, opportunities, ideas come to you. But you have to first of all start to say to yourself, this is going to be my new normal. But I already have the resources, I have the skill set, but how can I use the skill set and, and allow it to be expressed through another medium? To so all the makeup artists out there who've been impacted, by the lockdown and the consequences of the pandemic. I want you to keep hope alive. And one word, one sentence for you is, ensure that you choose faith over fear. Choose faith over fear. We're gonna get through the season, but I need you to stay safe and to keep hope alive.